So I'm continuing on the subject of machine and workflow with Ableton Live. And there was something that I wanted to do with this track, the D. And what I wanted to do was to take the single instance of the machine plugin and then have separate outputs for kits. And these are known as groups in machine. And also to have separate MIDI tracks and MIDI clips, you know, because the benefit of working with Ableton Live is the clips and this whole ability to structure stuff on the fly in real time. So let me just show you what I did on here. And I've got here a group with literally everything running through it. And this has got the solid bus effect on here. And let me just give you a reminder of uh, what the track sounds like so far. <laughs> These are all here. So split up into tracks. And you know, the way that I work when I'm in standalone on machine is that I literally put down a beat using a group and then just really quickly I just want to load up something else and see what happens so quite often I end up layering together maybe four groups to create a single one bar or two bar or even four bar loop you know so that's what I did here and these were using preset library kits for speed you know sometimes I don't have a lot of time to put together kits from scratch so I was using library kits and let me just show you here you get a sense of how many sounds I was using from each one. So you can see here the work kit. Um, if we take a look down below, let me take off the modulation, uh, sorry, the velocity lane, and uh, we get some more space here. So you see of this kit, the first one, so group A, I was only using uh, three sounds. So the rest of the kit I wasn't using. And you can see also that I've taken the sounds out so that I don't actually use extra processing. I basically take out the redundant sounds afterwards. So resetting, so clearing those because they may have effects on them and that's going to hit the processor harder. So group B, that was literally the snare. So just one sound. Group C, um, just a couple of these being used. In fact, three sounds on there. And then group four, this is one, two, three. And that's about it. So, you know, you can see really in an ideal world, it'd be better if I had everything on one kit, but I haven't. All right, so that's literally just because of the way that I work. I just literally load up group after group after group until I've got the beat that I want. So that's that. Now, the thing that I needed to do, and if you check uh, that other video that I've put up about you know, working with machine and triggering sounds inside um, machine from live, is that I had to set it up. And you know, this is gonna show you here. So select the group, just drop down here, and you go to sound MIDI batch setup. Make sure this is set here to sounds to MIDI notes. And the other thing that I did was to drag and drop these. And you can use this icon here and drag it into the session view. That's what I did, but I'm not going to show you that on the video. So group B, I did the same. Group C, the same. D, the same. The whole thing was going through those same procedures. And, you know, I ended up with basically the machine here. And then this was the track. This is the Ableton track for it. And then I set up external MIDI tracks, uh, sorry, external instrument tracks, should I say. So you can see this is how it is. I know that I'm gonna to have to do another video about this uh, at some point, but uh, you know, the subject's very much on this whole kind of workflow thing with uh, Ableton and Machine. And I just wanted to add this as an extra video today. So look, just coming back here. So the first instance is the original machine plugin loaded onto a MIDI track. This here is an external instrument track. The important thing to notice here is, is if you have a look, the uh, the MIDI 2, which is here over the, um, uh, selecting the original track. And then over here, I'm selecting the group that I want. So the first main kit is group A. And um, let me just name these so you can really understand that. So that's, let me just put in a G. There we go, group B. Oh man, let me just, sorry. You're probably thinking, what is he on about? It's been a long day. Let me get that right. So group A, so literally group A, group B. This is group C. And 
and this is going to be group D. Uh, just expand that just a little bit so we can see this. It looks like group G, doesn't it? There we go. That's because it's missing that. Right. So hopefully this is clear now. Now, once again, group A, consider that MIDI channel one. OK, here, the external instrument you can see here, I'm dropping down to MIDI channel two. The output is the next available output in machine. And I set out individual outputs for these. So that's on three and four. So now if we go to group C, that's on MIDI channel three. And the output is five and six. And then over here, group D, that's on MIDI channel four. Output seven and eight. So literally, it's working in a multi-timbral fashion. So machine is receiving on multiple MIDI channels. Each group has literally its own MIDI channel. So you know, group A is group is MIDI channel one. Group B is MIDI channel two. Group C three, and so on, right up to eight. So that's how it works. You know, the multi timbral specification of most MIDI devices goes up to sixteen, but we've only got eight groups on machine. So just uh, want to dive in here to machine and uh, show you that with these groups I set the output as well so you can see over here out this is set on the main to output one the second group group b this is going here to output two third group to output three and the fourth group here let me set the output there we go output four so we've got two things going on you know literally with this we've got the midi channel which is representing the group and then the physical output coming into when well, I say physical, you know, the, uh, the virtual physical output of the machine into the channel here. And then on the external instrument, you can see that represented here. So MIDI over here and then external output. That's the way it works. And of course, that means that I can get in and I can EQ stuff, separate stuff out, which is great. I could go one step further and uh, treat stuff individually as well. You know, so I could set up some additional audio tracks and then have the sounds rooted um, on independent channels in the mixer, which gives me even more control. But I'm really vibing with how it's sounding at the moment. I'm totally happy with it. it gives me the control I need. And uh, yeah, it allows me to get a little bit more control here and also to have the ability to start arranging stuff now. <laughs> Just a little note about the texture in the track and um, I wanted it to sound old so I'm running it through Magnetic and this is from Nomad Factory. It's something that I use if I want to make something sound like it's older than it is. And the key to this at the moment is this tape saturation occurring. I'll switch it off for you. And ultimately it's a cleaner sound. I'm still debating whether or not I'm going to have this tape on there and back on. Just roll it back actually after listening to that. So I'm actually really curious. Um, if you guys uh, tell me which version you prefer, to, let me just play it back so you can listen to it in a little bit more detail. So literally, tell me what you prefer. Do you like it with the tape saturation or without? So without. So anyway, that was switching it on. You saw when I turned the tape saturation on. Um, yeah, just give me a shout. Let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, at some point, I will get another video going literally step by step with the external instrument. But just in a nutshell, the external instrument is a combination of MIDI and also audio on the same track. And yes, it's designed for external instruments like external hardware, but you can use it with your plugins as well. Yeah. 